In this screencast, I'm going to discuss chemical potential for a single component. And so we're interested in chemical potential because it's the tendency of a substance to change composition, aggregation state, meaning different phases, liquid versus a gas, location, so something diffuses, for example, from high concentration to low concentration. It's important in order to predict the direction of mass transfer because mass transfer is going to go from high chemical potential to low chemical potential. So if we look at the definition, the chemical potential, use the symbol U, and the units of chemical potential, energy per mole, this is exactly the same as the Gibbs free energy for single component. I keep emphasizing that the single component. Well, Gibbs free energy is just defined as H minus TS, and H is U plus PV. So this is an equation of how we would calculate chemical potential. Now, chemical potentials can depend on the pressure. It's going to depend on the temperature, depend on the phase. And within a phase, it also will depend on the concentration. It's important this is within a given phase. So the equations where we can relate chemical potential to changes in pressure and temperature, I'm not going to go through them in detail, but let's look at them briefly. So I've written the first law of thermodynamics in terms of a differential form for closed system, reversible, and therefore we can relate Q to temperature and entropy and work to pressure and volume. We use then the definition of U to make a substitution. We'll now write the definition of H in differential form. And then we'll make the substitution for U that we have here. And then when we end up with this equation, we see these two terms cancel. So the differential term for DH is simplified. We then use our definition for G, our Gibbs free energy, and substitute. So here's the definition. We multiply out the terms, a derivative or product, and we make the substitution here. And we end up with the Gibbs free energy, single component, same as the differential change in Gibbs free energy, same as the differential change in chemical potential. And this shows how it changes with pressure and with temperature. So this says for a single component, as the pressure increases, then the chemical potential is going to increase because volume is a positive number. It also says as the temperature increases, the chemical potential decreases. Entropy also, absolute entropy is a positive number. So let's look at the chemical potential, how it changes with temperature for two phases. So you're plotting chemical potential versus temperature for a narrow temperature range. The chemical potential, if the pressure is held constant, then the chemical potential change is just minus S dt. And so you'll notice that the negative slope is larger magnitude for the liquid because the entropy of the liquid is greater than the entropy of the solid. So the idea here is that at lower temperature, the solid is the stable phase, and therefore drawn as a solid line, because it has a lower chemical potential than the liquid. So here's the liquid chemical potential if it existed at that temperature, but the solid is more stable. However, because the difference in slopes at the higher temperature, the liquid is the stable phase, and at the melting point, the chemical potential of the liquid is identical to the chemical potential of the solid, and they're at equilibrium, meaning they have same chemical potential. Well, we can look at the same type of diagram now at constant temperature and how things change with pressure. So just a reminder, this diagram that we just looked at is at constant pressure. Here we're looking at, again, single component over a narrow range of pressures and comparing liquid and vapor. So the stable phase is the solid line. So at higher pressure, 
liquid stable because the vapor phase chemical potential is much higher, but because of the difference in slopes, at lower pressure, vapor is a stable phase because it has the lower chemical potential. And again, at the boiling points, the chemical potentials are the same. So the slopes are very different here because the volume of the vapor is much larger than the volume of the liquid. And this is why the slopes are so different. The slope is positive but very small for the liquid phase here. So you can look at simulations to show more examples of chemical potential for different phases and which phase is more stable. So here's a link to a website that shows this particular simulation that can be used to vary the phases you're interested in. The last aspect of chemical potential discussed here is effective concentration. So important talking about concentration within a phase this is important so if we're in the same phase then a higher concentration this means a higher chemical potential and so for example suppose you have a gas on the left and on the right we have a very low concentration of gas so we have a vacuum one phase one component this is going to be higher chemical potential this is going to be low chemical potential mass transfer then if there's an opening between these two containers will go from high chemical potential to low chemical potential so the chemical potential determination for a mixture is a little more complicated and we discussed that in a separate screencast